One thing uh, that it, I mean by collecting relationships is that we no longer see the artwork as an autonomous individual piece uh, that exists separate from its history when it was made, but also its history of being shown. Um, and how do we reflect that? We, we, we uh, reconstruct exhibitions from 20 or more years ago and we reinstall them in the same rooms, in the same configuration that they were, so that those relationships between artworks, between an Andy Warhol and an Alan Charlton, uh, are reconfigured again 20, 20 or so years later in ways that a new audience can see and understand what the relationship was then and maybe how it's changed now. Um, we also look at, uh, at purchasing um, whole uh, uh, in museum installations, such as the Raum der Gegenwart, um, installations which uh, take on a, a whole different character if they're seen as a whole, rather than a series of individual photographs or films or sculptures. Um, so this is about building relationships between artworks. The second step in, in collecting relationships is collecting relationships with the people who look at the artworks. That means you, the public, and also us and the artists. Um, what do we think about them and can we record those memories, those emotional entanglements that we have with artworks through methods like this, like video, like interviews, like oral history in general? Um, and can we record that? You know, it would have been fascinating if we had those kind of records from the 1940s or the 1950s of people who came to the museum or of uh, the museum directors at the time talking about their relationship to the artworks. Um, that would allow us to understand how art changes in its social relationship through time. And I hope that 50 years hence, people can look back at this moment and understand a little, not just about the single canvas or the single sculpture, but also how it fitted into a whole Weltanschauung, a whole way of looking at the world.